Welcome to Karuta 2.2 use case testimony. If you're willing to move up closer, that would be wonderful. If you're not, you're welcome to stay where you are, but please move up if you're willing. I am Janice Smith, uh, the lead for the Karuta project, and we have um, some very important members of our project here. Jacques Reynaud from HEC Montréal up here. And we have Olivier Gerbet in the first row, and I'm getting an echo. And then Shoji Kajita over here from Kyoto University. Olivier is from ePortfolio. So welcome to our session. Our abstract is that we're going to be showing you five use cases for using Karuta to give you a good picture of how broad and how flexible Karuta can be to meet various different needs quickly and cheaply. We'll then review some features of our current version and upcoming versions, and we'll talk about the use of templates to make it, it easier for you to implement Karuta at your institution. We'll start with an overview of the project, talk about high-impact e-portfolio practice, go through our five use cases, talk about new features in Karuta, how templates can help you jumpstart your implementation, and if we have time, we can go over six strategies for success with portfolios. What about the Karuta project? It's a next generation e uh, open source e-portfolio created in the spirit of the open source portfolio tools in Sakai. We have partners on three different continents and with two commercial affiliates. We graduated from uh, Aperio Incubation and our latest release came out in April of this year. We have a current user base in Canada, in Mont Montreal, in France at Grenoble, in Belgium at Liège, in, in Japan in Kyo at Kyoto, and in the United States in New Jersey. We have a RFP out right now from the French Ministry of Education that promises to bring in a number of French schools in a consortium. And we're looking for new pilots for, to broaden our reach, so please consider using Karuta. Technical specs. Modern architecture with jQuery JavaScript in the front end, REST APIs, Java and MySQL, or Oracle on the back end. We can be LTI integrated with Sakai. We have at least one school successfully using it with LTI integration. Responsive design to work well on all types of devices and built-in capacities for export of data, a very important item for anyone doing portfolios. You don't want to get stuck on any one platform. What is high-impact e-portfolio practice? Well, first, what is an e-portfolio? It can be a collection of artifacts or a place to reflect on learning, a place to manage your virtual identity, a way to assess learning and improve teaching, or a showcase of your skills and accomplishments. There are different processes regarding portfolios, which involve a number of different actors, students who upload, reflect, and document their evidence of learning, instructors who guide the process, a very important key to the, to the portfolio workflow, Evaluators who rate evidence of learning using rubrics, administrators who capture data, and institutions, programs, and administrators who use that data, full circle to come round again and begin the learning process with hopefully improved methods of learning. Finally, students are motiv motivated most importantly by being able to showcase their learning separate from the assessment process. Now, why? Why portfolios? Well, in the United States, we're under pressure right now for uh, possibly losing funding because learning is not as visible in our universities as it should be. We are critiqued that our students are not learning how to think. Portfolios can make, can make learning visible, and portfolios can help students think, reflect, interact with their world from their own point of view. 
E-portfolios, in, in fact, are, have become an, uh, what's called a high-impact educational practice. About 10 years ago, a man named George Cook from the Association of American Colleges and Universities published a list of what he called 10 high-impact practices that, are, that research shows increase rates of student retention and student engagement. Here are, here's the list that he identified. Perhaps many of these practices are happening at your university. You have certain activities for first year students. You have learning communities, writing intensive courses, collaboration, undergrad research, activities involving diversity and global learning, service learning, community-based learning, internships, capstone courses. These are items that all exceed the confines of a particular course. A portfolio does as well. In fact, George Cook says a portfolio is a meta high impact practice where the scope and complexity of the effort for e-portfolios are impressive and the pattern of positive findings are consistent enough to substantiate the claim that the e-portfolio, when done well, warrants joining the AAC and U HIPs list. By the way, this book that uh, you see posted on the screen is a highly recommended source if you're planning to do a portfolio implementation. This is a how-to book on how to succeed with portfolios. It is platform agnostic, tool agnostic. It basically says organizing your teachers, your students, your administrators to support and benefit from the portfolio will make or break your project. Value propositions for high impact e-portfolios. When done well, an e-portfolio can advance student success. You can get better pass rates, better grades, better retention. It supports reflection, integration, and deep learning. Reflecting and connecting learning, advancing higher order thinking, helping students con construct purposeful identities as learners. And all in the effort to catalyze learning-centered instructional change. A lot of big words here, a lot of important concepts. Portfolios are about educational change. Portfolios are not about the status quo, doing business as usual. So Karuda can facilitate portfolios done well. You might choose to make a learning portfolio to focus on developing individual skills and identity. You might choose an assessment portfolio, building on a learning portfolio to focus on the improvement of your programs or your institutions. And importantly, your students will want you to choose a showcase portfolio so they can share their own version of, the, of how they would display the evidence of their learning with others. We're going to be showing you five use cases today. There are many other use cases that could be shown, but these are five typical ones. Jacques is going to introduce three of them, and then I'll introduce two more. So the idea is to show you how flexible Karuta can be to meet the needs of your institution. Okay. Thank you, Janice. Hi, everyone. So my task is to uh, review with you quickly uh, uh, different use cases so you can, you can have a, a, a better idea about what are the, par the, the, the flexibility of Karuta and what you can do. So the first one is uh, the AACU assessment portfolio. So this is, so this is some, uh, I mean, I don't know if you're aware, this is the American Association of Universities and Colleges. And uh, what they did is they, they sort of have their set of learning outcomes. And uh, these learning outcomes, I'm sorry about, the, we have the, uh, the sort of uh, automatic uh, change, but I want to s concentrate on this one. Yeah, they have different learning outcomes, and for each learning outcome, uh, students sort of are expected to submit uh, evidence of proof. Uh, students also will reflect on these uh, artifacts they submitted, and then uh, faculty will be able to sort of uh, evaluate using sort of, a, sort of rubrics. So students here will reflect, and 
eventually uh, there will be some kind of uh, rubric that uh, an instructor can use so uh, and, and sort of assess the student. Uh, this is a summary report that you have that will be, this is a sort of dashboard for the students. There is a dashboard that the student can see in terms of uh, numbers because the, the student will have like uh, uh, sort of uh, numbers that um, summarize the portfolio. You, in Caruta, it is possible also to sort of create tables that will display comments that are made by the students or by the instructor. So it is really handy to sort of review what's going on. So everything can be tailored in terms of the needs of the, the different actors. Uh, and finally, you can have like overall reports where uh, the uh, I'm sorry, everyone, uh, I mean the administrator of the program can have access to the result of each of student, can download that in Excel, and eventually can make special statistical reports and sort of go uh, deeper in terms of analysis of what's going on in the portfolio and what students have accomplished and maybe some weaknesses in the program so to improve upon the, the learning of the students. Okay, so this is a fairly large uh, example. Now I'm, I'm going to present something that is more, uh, that will be simpler. It's a management diploma. So it's a course that was given to the uh, s a business executive so they could uh, sort of learn quickly sort of all the different fields of uh, management. And for example, they, they, they had like seven or eight, seven modules here. And for each module, the, uh, the participant had to sort of answer questions about what they learned about their, uh, about their, about the different modules. And this kind of reflection was, uh, was really important. And, and what happened is that if you're responsible for such a program, you have to sort of, uh, focus on your student, follow their progress and see what's happening. And with Caruta, it's, it's kind of easy to set up some kind of uh, workflow to sort of see what, what, are, what your students have accomplished during these uh, different models. So here you see that uh, the students, uh, the, the sort of checks, the green checks are uh, appear when students have sort of uh, completed the questions. So here you can see that uh, student number one did the, the financial issues, uh, student number two maybe a couple one. So you have a, you can sort of track the progress of your students. So this is kind of useful for if you have lar a large number of students and you you want to really get a feel about how the course is going and how the progress is go is going. Okay, another example now. It's slightly different. It's, uh, it's co-curricular learning. So in this case, what you expect is the students will sort of post activities that they've done on the side. This is not really part of the course, but uh, this is something that they, you expect students to sort of participate here. In this case, they've done some tutoring in the middle school. Uh, they can sort of post a description of this co-curricular activity. They can download uh, uh, images, uh, they can reflect on this activity, and then uh, they can link uh, they can link this activity to sort of to some sort of learning outcomes and you can you can sort of uh, create a table to sort of see uh, what kind of learning outcomes uh, the students have achieved with all these co curricular activities so this is not a big portfolio it 's just an example of the kind of of the sort of special section that you can add to your overall portfolio, which will address this, uh, the issue about co-curricular activities. So again, the idea is to stress the fact that Caruta is not a sort of one, uh, a sort of unique solution. It sort of can be tailored to sort of assess, address different needs that might happen in, at your university. Okay, uh, NBTS, uh, Janice. The next, the next two use cases take place at an institution called the New Jersey uh, Theological Seminary. It's a small school. It's part of the LAMP Consortium. It's the first LAMP school to sign on to Karuda, and we're hoping that more LAMP schools will also do so. 
at NBTS, they decided that they wanted an assessment portfolio that was anonymous and a showcase portfolio that where the student is named and to separate those two so that they can proceed in an appropriate way with their assessment procedure. This is the welcome page for the assessment portfolio. They've customized it with a uh, picture of their school, their school colors. There could be more done, but they wanted to leave this in a relatively simple case. You see the navigation on the left-hand side, and uh, navigation can be hidden on mobile devices or displayed as you, as you wish. Um, in keeping with what you saw with the AAC and U use case, there's a, I'm sorry, this thing is advancing by itself. <laughs> um, there's um, a place for student submissions, and in this case, self-evaluation, that they, they, where they evaluate themselves in relation to the learning outcome at the beginning of their work and at the end of their work. They then supply one or more artifacts, which could be documents, images, videos, audios, PowerPoints, anything multimedia. And they are asked to reflect and document. So reflect by um, talking about what they, how, they, how they feel about what they've done, whether they could have done better, whether they would do something different in the future, and document the what, when, where, why of how they produce this artifact. The evaluators then come at NBTS, they come online every, at the end of every semester and evaluate according to their outcome rubrics, which in this case are defined by something they call a standard component, which comes from the theology world. Um, their rubric, that's what they call the, uh, the descriptors of their rubrics. So different raters evaluate different students anonymously. And then the student can view their ratings, not their grades, but their ratings in relation to the, uh, in relation to the rubrics that the evaluators are using, and, and view an average of the internal evaluators and also see their external evaluator, usually the place where they're doing an internship. And the administrator can aggregate all the data into one big block of data and have that be downloadable as a CSV or a PDF or another version in order to uh, be able to an analyze it further in Excel. It's relatively simple, but it's complex in that different users are part of different graduate programs which use different rubrics, and every user has different evaluators. So there's a, this complex nesting of information so that everybody ends up in the right place doing the thing that's expected of them at the time that it's expected. The portfolio you could think of as a, uh, a mega organizer of different processes having to do with who does what, when, where about learning. Now, NBTS also has a showcase portfolio to motivate students to be part of the part portfolio process and use a showcase for their job placement and, um, and uh, career development. It also has a welcome page. In this case, they decided to standardize it for the institution, but they could allow students to be totally creative on every page or only on some pages. They chose to standardize the welcome page and allow total creativity on other pages. On the welcome page, the, pers the person who owns the portfolio can um, introduce themselves in a personal way through a paragraph or two. They then can, uh, after filling out their profile, a very simple profile, can fill out different pages, for example, experiences, presentations, about me, and a CV page, and use different blocks to allow the access to artifacts, which could be videos, images, captions, documents, other multimedia, uh, to um, make their page as attractive as they know how. They can also hide or share their particular page. Now, when I keep using the word can, I'm, implying, I'm referring to the fact that NBTS made some decisions about configuring Karuda for their students. You might make different decisions. 
Karuda has an interface that allows you to make these decisions at the configuration level and at the portfolio level and at the sharing level. So you know wh what your instant looks like, instance looks like overall, how it's constructed for different groups in your institution, and how it's shared among users for, d for the purposes of doing different things like adding evidence, evaluating evidence, administrating the ratings of different evidence. So here's some more pages in the showcase portfolio, and then there's a, a way to have the CV pop up so you can read the whole thing on the page. So those are our five use cases. There could be many more, but we wanted to give you a taste of the breadth of what you could do. Now we're going to spend a few minutes talking about what's coming in Karuda, what's part of 2.2 and beyond Karuda, and then we'll um, move forward. Jacques? OK, thanks. Good. Uh, well, I mean, the new features in Karuta, uh, I mean, they're, they're the ones that are really useful, but I guess uh, at this stage I'm not going to sort of to deeply present them. I mean, for example, there are uh, some administrative tools. That this can be really handy when you have lar a large number of students. That, that's a big plus. Uh, sharing. Sharing is really special in, in Karuta. We spend a long time addressing sharing, and there are many use cases that, that, can, that can, can cause trouble in, in a portfolio environment, and I think we sort of we came up with something interesting in terms of solution. For example, uh, you know, when you do inter when students do internship, it's a big issue. I mean, we had that in Montreal. Is that, I mean, of course, uh, you want the outside person to be able to evaluate the students. And sometimes it requires that the, this outside person has a sort of an account and sort of logs to the system, and uh, you have to provide the account. The person doesn't have to lose the account with some... That happens once in a while. Uh, and then the, I mean, th those are all th administrative barriers that, that, that makes the whole thing difficult. And, you know, th that can cause problems. So we have this uh, special feature that can be set up quite easily where uh, the, outs the students will sort of complete his uh, self-assessment, for example, and will sort of send, uh, there will be a, a send an email to my uh, external advisor, uh, uh, evaluator, and the person, the external evaluator, will receive an email, and everything will be part of the email. So the person will be able to sort of complete the form within the email, uh, click on submit, and everything will be sort of sent back to the portfolio. But actually, it is part of the portfolio, but it's sort of a, an easy way to access it. So this sort of simplifies greatly all the, uh, the, uh, the assessment that are done by external evaluators. There are many types, other types of, assess uh, of uh, sharing that is possible. For example, a student can easily share parts of a portfolio, can be the whole thing, can be a smaller part, can be some bits of the portfolio that can be shared with, with other students or, or other instructor maybe, or maybe outside person. So this sharing thing has been improved quite a bit. Uh, showcase, this is what you've seen, Janice have presented the showcase. Uh, we sort of improve again uh, this issue. Is, uh, you've seen the different uh, uh, sort of uh, blocks. So you can construct uh, easily a sort of a showcase portfolio by building blocks. There will be, a, like a block will be an image, then a block of text. You can change the color, you can change the font size, you can put some videos, you can, so you can sort of tailor. So this is really interesting for students because they can sort of show their, their personal, uh, their they, they, they can sort of tailor the, this presentation to their sort of uh, skills and sort of present themselves in a sort of more truthful uh, fashion. Uh, reporting, you've seen reporting also uh, before. Uh, we, we sort of improve our, our knowledge of ex uh, reporting. We sort of, uh, we have a much better understanding of all the full capacities of reporting now in Karuta. It's uh, very powerful. You can, you can sort of use these tools to not only to, ma to make reports, but also to create sort of 
simplify uh, UI so students can easily so enter the information. So the, this is this is very very interesting. Something that is forthcoming in the next version of Kahuta. Uh, I don't think I will uh, have time to sort of present fully that, but there will be a sort of special uh, add-on where you could. Uh, the student could present himself or herself using sort of a, a map mind like this, and uh, the the size of the circle will be the will correspond to the sort of the the level of interest of the students or the level of of capacity of the students in terms of of the the information that is provided here. Uh, it's in French. It's uh, because it's. Big, presently used in Grenoble in France, but you can see that icon myself. Uh, this is Eric Giraudin. is part of our our project in France in Grenoble. But Eric is a is a good designer, so he he sort of put in blue some uh, some aspect of his skills that are management and pilotage is like. Uh, uh, working on projects, so this is what he thinks he's really good at, and this is why he sort of emphasized that. But the nice things about that is it, it's a sort of quick graphical summary of of what the student or what the person is. And what's interesting, I won't be able to demo because it won't take too much time. But I, I, if I, if you have a QR reader, you can just if you have a, a, a card or something, a resume, you can put this QR code, this barcode, on your resume. And then it will go right to the website and will present exactly this page. So that's kind of interesting. Again, that's, these are small add-ons that students might find interesting. That comes from you know, the community that sort of give back uh, the new features. So this is a big aspect about Karuta. This is open source, but it's also a community uh, that is part of uh, the project. So when someone sort of works on some new ideas and and uh, and develop the codes, we can bring it back to the community, and everyone can sort of use it and share it. Uh, yes. The nice thing also, this is part also. It's a follow up on the community part. Is that once uh, we develop some portfolios or some workflows or some ways to sort of organize uh, learning from st of students, uh, they, w they will be available as templates in the, uh, on GitHub. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can start from example, you can, and then you can sort of modify them or use them to learn how to sort of go about these examples. So we ha will have Right now, we have two examples, two templates available in GitHub. We have the ACU assessment portfolio. This is the one I presented before. It's a very complex portfolio, so you will find pretty much all the tricks and the, the ideas, and you can maybe apply that to your, your case. And also, there is something very interesting. It's a Europass language proficiency. So there are a set of rubrics for languages. So it's a, it's a very it's a very precise way to, for students to sort of indicate the level of uh, their mastering of, uh, of a language. So this is available as a, as a template. And we have a couple templates forthcoming. Th these are basically the one that I presented this morning. Uh, so they will, be, they will be available in GitHub. So you can, you can go get them and sort of use them and modify them as you want. Uh, if you're interested by Karuta, the, you can you can start there. You can there are workbooks available, so they can teach you step by step how to uh, how to use Karuta. We have people here in the room that has uh, used these tutorials, and I think they did a really good job. So uh, so you can go to the Karuta website, Karuta project website, and 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 you can get this information. So yeah, maybe I will pass. We doing on the time. information now to Janice to complete. Okay, uh, we're going to talk now about some platform agnostic principles or strategies for using portfolios for success at your university. But I'm going to emphasize how Karuta could help you with each strategy as we go through it. First strategy, reinforce continuously the purpose of your e-portfolio project with students and with faculty. Now, with Karuta, and if you start with a template, then you would be starting with a, a 
previously defined way of using portfolios. If you start with a blank page, you'll be inventing your portfolio from the beginning. Either way, it's very important for you to know what are you trying to do with your portfolio. Um, and it's very important to have stakeholders, especially faculty, involved. The faculty are going to be helping you implement the portfolio, introduce it, maintain it, guide students in using it, and reinforce it along the way. So as you choose your purpose, keep in mind what can you persuade the faculty to be on board with. You might choose a purpose that you believe in, but your faculty need to believe in it as well. If they don't, the students will probably not follow. The students need to believe, need to see that everybody is urging them to do this new activity. So your purposes might be to support learning, encourage deep learning, or to assess learning in order to improve teaching, or to collect institutional data from your assessment process or through showcase portfolios to support career development in the job search, or something more uh, long-term to, en to encourage lifelong learning. In any case, it's important to be clear about that purpose as you move forward. Secondly, emphasize the importance of documenting and reflecting upon evidence of learning. It is too easy for the portfolio process to become a file cabinet instead of a way to improve a student's understanding of learning. And it is too easy to have students upload evidence where you, the evaluator, you don't know where it came from, how they produced it, is it even theirs? They have no ownership of it unless you ask them, how did you bring, how did this come about? What is it? Where did it come from? When did you do it? Why did you do it? It gives you a context for evaluating what they put in their portfolio. And there are many ways to reflect. So reflection prompts can be varied. If you continually ask the student, reflect here, you probably will not get very depth, much depth in your reflections. Reflections have been written about in many resources. One of them is Kathleen Yancey's book on reflection in the writing classroom. There are other reflection resources. It's something that, at least in the United States, we don't know how to do very well. But it's all important if you're going to have a meta look at what it learning is all about, to understand why I'm learning, how I'm learning, what I'm learning, what I can improve in my learning. Strategy for success number three, encourage faculty and student peers to guide and support the learners in the portfolio process. Now your prompts in Karuta, because you're writing them yourself, can be very informative. Or you can add help buttons in Karuta to help guide students in what they're doing. Um, faculty in every class can uh, give advice about Karuta. If the portfolio doesn't have a home in at least one course or many courses, students are going to put it last and maybe never get around to doing it. It needs to be part of the assignments in, in courses. It needs to be part of the syllabus of courses. It needs to be part of the programmatic step by step. So faculty can help students learn why to use portfolios, when and how to add evidence, how to document and reflect. Maybe students need to learn to be better reflectors. And how to use the portfolios as they leave the school for their careers and, their, and for lifelong learning. Faculty who do this, however, are going to say, how are, I'm already too busy. Why are you adding work to my day? So the question would be, what could you replace? What can you replace as outdated teaching practices with, so the portfolio can move in? to allow faculty to have more guidance responsibilities. And how can you reward those faculty who get on board? Can you give them extra release time? Can you give them awards? Can you give them travel money? Can you give them some recognition? Portfolio prompts, whether they're about reflection or about how to or when to, need to be quality. They should be brief. They should not repeat, repeat, repeat. They should be open-ended, engaging, imaginative. Having some of your best writers work on the portfolio prompts would be worth it. 
And feedback can be summative in the form of ratings of evalu evaluating student evidence, but it also needs to be formative to help students by supporting them, encouraging them, informing them, doing this on a frequent basis and an interactive basis. Strategy for success number four, use portfolios to help students understand and meet learning outcomes. The portfolio is a vehicle for students to understand learning outcomes, to engage with the learning outcomes such that they see the rubrics, they understand the complex terms in the rubrics, they re they're reviewing learning outcomes regularly in their classes, and they're helping students identify, and the faculty are helping students identify what kind of evidence is appropriate, how, what kind of evidence should you be producing in your classes in order to best represent yourself in the portfolio. Faculty who evaluate evidence need assistance in that they need a good rubric. The rubric needs to have carefully thought out criteria, levels, and descriptors. Just saying it's satisfactory, not satisfactory, or very good is not sufficient. What you'll have is some faculty rating in one way, another faculty rating in another way, and you'll have apples, oranges, bananas, and cherries in terms of your evaluation data. Your, your evaluators need, need to meet regularly to, to calibrate their ratings of evidence using a particular rubric and inner rater reliability, even statistically calculating it so that you know you have it, is very important. Number five, help students integrate their learning across contexts and disciplines. The portfolio can be, when done well, a, a, a way to integrate learning across classes, across disciplines, across programs. So when you're building a, Karuta in Peru, uh, sorry, a portfolio in Karuta, Keep in mind where it will be used, how it will be used, and how you can help students understand that something they did in chemistry might apply to math, something they did in English might apply to history, something could be repurposed, something that they're not often encouraged to do, but repurposed for use in a different context. Integrating learning is not easy. Our system is set up not to do it, but it is something that is required in the workplace. If you, if you compartmentalize your skills in a workplace, you are not in your best performance. So how can students learn to uh, take evidence in from one context, apply it in another, reflect on how learning crosses contexts, and even draw interdisciplinary mind maps like the one you saw from Grenoble, France, used in Karuda, to help uh, others understand the complexity of their skills and accomplishments. And finally, encourage learners to strive for authenticity in and ownership of their portfolios. Students in at least the United States are often encouraged to let others be in charge of their education. But leaving school with others in charge of your education gets you nowhere in the workplace. You are in charge of your education. So how are you going to learn to be the, the unique person you are? There are some quotes here to share with you. One from Darren Cambridge, who's a kind of an e-portfolio guru. I also recommend his books. To be authentic requires understanding and being true to oneself. By expressing who we are, we are calling ourselves into being. The portfolio can help the student meet himself or herself as he or she leaves the classroom. Authenticity is discovering one's own unique evidence, ev essence from Michael Mead. So portfolios are a discovery process. Who am I? Where am I going? What do I want to do with me while I'm in school and when I leave school? And finally, from Bill Moyers, freedom begins the moment you realize someone else has been writing your story. Our schools, our teachers, our parents have been writing our story. It's time we took the, po the pen from their, their hands and started start writing it ourselves. We can help our students become the independent learners and the independent workers that our communities need. That concludes our session. We have time for questions, but first let me just tell you how to learn more about us. We have a project site. You can find us on the Aperio website as an official Aperio project. You can try Karuta. There are uh, different um, tr 
sandboxes for Karuda. If you go to ePortfolium.com slash Karuda, you can find our sandbox. You can follow us on Google Plus or Twitter. Most importantly, you can download Karuda and use it yourself. You can contribute to Karuda by contacting us through GitHub. And we have several email addresses that we'd be happy to answer questions or help you get started. We're looking for adoption. So before we get to questions or concerns, um, we will thank you. And let's see if there are any questions. Do we have any questions for them? I have uh, sheets, uh, so if you want to have this information in, in print, uh, you can, I can give them to you. So it sort of summarizes the, the project and uh, gives you all the information, so that can be handy. Thank you for coming. We appreciate your interest. We hope to hear from some of you as potential Karuda, Karuda adopters. Thanks. <laughs>